Good evening, and welcome to Justin's Joint. Tonight we're going to do some drafting. Doesn't that sound like fun? Stay tuned. Okay, guys, so tonight we're going to do something a little bit different. Right now what I am doing is I'm having some f Hearth and Home Fleet Commander in my nice clipper well pipe here. It's a nice briar pipe. I like this. My mom found it at an antique store and bought it for me for my birthday. And uh, smokes well, and I like it a lot. But this video is not about pipes or pipe tobacco. No, I just happen to be smoking one while I'm doing this because you know you see pictures of draftsmen from the old days and they're all sitting at their drafting table smoking a pipe so I figure hey it's 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 only it's part of the job description right anyhow what we're doing tonight is we're going to draw up a geodesic dome now, I don't know if any of you guys have ever been driving around and you've seen a house that had like a domed roof or a building that had a domed roof. Sometimes you'll see like a, a stadium or something have a, a domed roof over it. That's basically the concept that we're going to do tonight. And it's, it's really a very simple thing. You would think that it's kind of hard to do. But it's not, because at least th this version that I'm going to be drawing tonight, you have basically three dimensions that you use to model the whole thing. You basically create two different triangles. We're going to call them triangle AAB and CCB. Okay, now that means nothing to you because I haven't shown you them yet. Let's go look at them right now. Okay, so here we are. And you can see that I've already kind of got one drawn up here. And the way that this works is you've got two triangles. Triangle AAB, which is the one you see here. Let me rotate this so that we're looking straight at it. Triangle AAB and triangle CCB. Now triangle AAB is we're gonna we're gonna use that to make kind of a pentagon shape, which is these yellow ones. Triangle CCB, we're gonna use to make some hexagons, and that's gonna be these hexagons in here, kind of in between the pentagons. Now the, the beauty about this is that you are given A, B, and C, and these are constant. Now you can scale them up or you can scale them down, and in most cases you're going to want to scale it up because, you know, with a B dimension of 0 .4035 anything, unless you're talking about like miles, uh, that is tiny. I mean, we're not trying to do a geodesic dome house for ants. What is this? A center for ants? We're trying to do like a geodesic dome that, you know, anybody could live in. But these are the constant values. You can scale them up or down. For the purposes of this video, we're going to use these constant values because I'll zoom in and you'll all know the difference. So let's go ahead and get started. I've got these written down on my notepad here because I'm going to go into a brand new file or a brand new model here. And we're going to start over and I'm going to do this and I'm going to show you how it is done. Okay. Okay, so here we are in a blank model space. Let me set my pipe down, that way it's not getting in the way. We're in a blank model space and we're going to start off with triangle AAB. Okay, so triangle AAB we know has a B dimension of 0 0.4035. Let's go ahead and color this yellow, that way we can tell the difference. And we need two equal sides of 0.3486. So this is where some um, sixth grade geometry is going to come into effect here. 0.3486. So we're going to basically draw two circles with a radius of 0.3486. And then we are going to connect the dots like thus. Boom. Whoops. Boom. And 
and boom. There we go. So we have, let's just check the dimensions. 4035, that is correct. 3486, that is correct. 3486, that is correct. So this is AAB. Let's go ahead and label this guy. A, oops, not 72. So there's B and A and A. Okay, so there's AAB. Let's move on and draw CCB. Now CCB also has a base dimension of 0 0.4035. But its legs are 0 0.4124. 0.4124. Okay. I bet you never thought this geometry that you uh, did in middle school would ever come in handy, but boy, look at this. Look at this, I do it on a daily basis. Okay, so this is C, C, B. C, C, B. Okay, so these are our two triangles. Now, we need to go about making some pentagons and hexagons so that we can start to stitch them together into this ballish type of a shape. So that's the next thing we're gonna do. We're gonna start with AAB and make some pentagons. So let's move to that. Okay, so here we are. We're gonna take and copy AAB up here. And now what we need to do is make a pentagon. Now, if you know anything about geometry, the total angles in a pentagon is 360 degrees obviously because that's the total shape of any kind of a, any kind of a polygon really but it's a pentagon it's a five-sided thing so we're going to take 360 divided by 5 to give us 72 degrees and that's what we're going to rotate this to get our pentagon now you'll notice something funny when i do this and i'll explain that in just a second but first what we're going to do is rotate this by 72 degrees which is 360 over 5 72. Now, you might be thinking, well, Justin, your, your sides don't match. And that is because this is totally flat right now. As you, re as you recall from seeing the dome that I had built, it's not a, f the, these, these pieces aren't flat. They're like, they're kind of popped up in the middle just a little bit. So what we got to do is get these points connected and then rotate the triangles up so that all of the points match up kind of like this. So we're gonna do that right now, and the way that I'm gonna do it is like this. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna go ahead and attach this here, okay? And then I'm going to find the center point of where, you know, where this is. Because obviously these are going too far because they're, they're laying flat, kind of overlapping each other. When, but when you rotate them up, you see, they'll, they'll kind of, I don't know if that's making any sense. They overlap when they're down, and then when you rotate them up, the points join, okay? So we need to find that center point where those points are gonna join. How are we gonna do that? Well, I'm gonna show you right now. We're gonna draw two perpendicular lines from the middle of each one of these faces, like this, and like this, and where they intersect is going to be our center point. So now what we can do is we can draw like a line from this point straight up and down. Kind of like this. And I don't, I don't know if you've lost your orientation, but I'll kind of give it a quick rotate here. So now if you look at it flat, you can see I've drawn a vertical line from those two intersecting red lines. Now I'm going to go ahead and make these lines this color right here okay so the, these are my construction lines now what I need to do is I need to figure out a way to rotate these up where they'll intersect so I don't really need this one anymore really all I need is this one because now I've got my line where it rotates up to hit it and then I'll recopy it all so what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at this thing not from the top looking down but we're gonna look at it from the side we're basically gonna look at it straight on from this 
edge right here. That's the edge we're going to rotate it about. So I'm going to look at a side view. So let's just look at the left view. Now if we zoom in, you'll notice that this yellow line, it kind of continues past, uh, let me get rid of this, it continues past this line. But we know that this point needs to touch this line. So once again, we're going to use some um, sixth grade geometry and we are going to go ahead and draw a circle in this side view to the point, just like that. We're just gonna basically take our compass and swing an arc. And if I change the view here a little bit so that you might be able to see it better, we have something like this, okay? Now I'm gonna change it back to wireframe because it's easier on the old eyeballs. So we're gonna look at it again back in a side view, this time the other side, but it doesn't really matter. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna rotate this guy to where this point is sitting right there at that intersection. So let's just go ahead and do that. And the intersection of this guy and this guy. Okay, so that gives me an inclined surface. And I'm gonna go ahead and make a surface out of this because for some reason it didn't do it before make that yellow so now if I turn this back to an illustrative view you can see if I look at the side view it's sitting up at a slope now what we're ready to do is go ahead and rotate this thing around four more times and make our pentagon so let's go ahead and say active angle of 72 and I want four copies we're going to rotate it about this point. And now you'll notice that all the sides mesh nice and nice and easy. And you can see we've got kind of this pentagon shaped thingamajigger. Okay, so we're basically going to do the exact same thing. Let me move this down a little bit closer. With this guy, only instead of making a pentagon, we're going to make a hexagon. Okay, so now that we have the pentagon drawn, we need to go back and do the same thing for triangle CCB. Only this time we're going to make a hexagon. So let's go ahead and copy one of these dudes up here. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and make that into a solid shape. We're going to make it red. And this time what we're gonna do is basically the same thing, only instead of a pentagon, we're going to do a hexagon. So instead of 360 divided by five, it's 360 divided by six. So let's just go ahead and copy one in here. Okay, so now you'll notice we have kind of the same thing happening. We're gonna use the same process boom just like that I'm gonna put some lines in boom boom okay and then I need to draw this guy like straight up and down so there we go now you'll you'll notice we have the exact same thing going on here so what we can do is go ahead, go back to a top view. We can get rid of this, we can get rid of that and that, and go to a right view. We're gonna go ahead and put this circle in just like this, just like we did before, and rotate. And there we have it, an inclined surface. Now if we come back to a top view and we rotate this guy five times at 60 degrees, we will have a nice hexagon. Look at that. Okay, so there we go. That's the building blocks. This is the building blocks of our geodesic dome. So this is where the rubber meets the road. So let's jump to the next step, and that is 
getting the top on and then getting a pentagon and two hexagons lined up. Okay, so here we are at this point of the game. We've got our pentagon, we've got our hexagons. We're going to take a copy of the pentagon. We're just going to move it out here. This is going to be the top piece. Now what we need to do is get some pentagons put on here. And get them rotated into place. Whoops, I needed to make a copy of that guy. Make a copy. Copy. Now something you'll notice though is that we have the same condition we had before with the triangles where these don't meet up yet. That's because we need to kind of rotate them down. They're, they're kind of like this and they need to be rotated down to kind of close off that gap. Now, the way to do that is through some more geometric construction. It's, it's actually fairly simple once you know what's going on. You just kind of have to know what's going on in order to do it. So, what we are going to do is the first thing we're going to bisect this angle formed between these two pentagons so we're gonna just go ahead connect the dots now it's easy to bisect because we know these two are the same so I'm not doing the whole swing in an arc and connecting the dots I just already you know so I'm just connecting the dots from here to here going from the midpoint back and I know that that is a bisector of this angle now, in order to find the point along this line where they'll rotate down and meet up nicely, we need to draw a line that is perpendicular to here and here. And where that intersects, that's the point at which they'll rotate down and join and kind of close off the gap. So what we need to do is just go ahead and do the same thing we did before. We're going to draw a vertical line right here down and then we're gonna get rid of this guy because we don't need that anymore we don't need this well actually let's keep that in there just to just to make sure that we are in the right spot but we don't need that and we don't need that so now what we need to do is put a circle in because we're rotating it along this line right here but we're rotating this edge so we got to basically kind of project this line out to where it's here well, we'll do that with the view. We're not going to worry about doing all that much projecting here. We're going to take advantage of the fact that we're using a CAD program. So I'm going to go ahead and put a circle in like this. I'm going to lock my axis out to this point. And then I'm going to rotate my view to look at a side. And then we're going to do the same thing we did before. We're just going to highlight this whole thing, if I could get the whole thing, and rotate it not 288 degrees, and we do not want to copy. We're going to rotate it about the center of this circle. And we're going to go down to the intersection of these two pieces here. Whoops. Now what you'll notice is if I go back to the top view, you'll notice it's right there. Right along that line is exactly how it needs to be. And it's right here at this intersection point, so we know we got it right. So we can go ahead and just take out our construction lines and now let's make five copies of this all the way around. Active angle of 72 degrees and we want four copies. And boom, and as you can see, we have the beginnings of a geodesic dome. You can see that all of our pieces are falling into place. So the next thing we need to do is go ahead and put in another set of penta pentagons. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go to the top view. Let's come down here, grab another pentagon. And let's just go ahead and stick this bad boy right here for now. So this one is a little bit tricky in that we're going to put this on and we're going to buy we're going to basically bisect this angle right here but what we got to do is get this this dude in here and rotate it out this way so we're going to go ahead and just go like this and i fully understand that this is at an odd angle into the page as you can see but that's no matter we can we can work around that there are ways of doing things here 
So we're going to go ahead and say move from there to there. We're going to rotate by three points. And we're going to say, I want to rotate it from here. But we don't want this Z dimension. So we're going to go ahead and zero that out. That way we're going flat, nice and flat, to here. But we don't want this Z dimension either. So we're going to say zero. OK, so now what that did is that lined it up nice and sweet right in the middle there. It's still nice and flat. And now all we're going to do is just take it and fold it down. So let me get rid of all of this. Actually, I might still need that one, but I definitely do not need this one. So let's go ahead and do that task next. OK, OK. For this step, it's going to be similar-ish, kind of. What we're going to do is we got to figure out a way to basically align ourselves so that we're looking square at all this crap. So let's just go this way, perpendicular, vertical. And then we're going to go perpendicular, horizontal. That way all these angles are 90 degrees. Now we want to rotate this view to where we're looking square right at this this line so that it basically will show up as a dot. So we're just going to go ahead and do that right now. Now, what you can see is we need to take this shape, rotate it about this point so that this point here hits right there. And that's what we're going to do. It's going to be the same thing as before. We're going to draw a circle in this view out to there. I'm going to change this back to wireframe. And then all we're going to do is just rotate it about the center of this circle out to that point. And then we're going to go to here, just like that. And once we go here, you should start to see, oops, and rotate this dude. Whoops, we're way the heck out there in space. Now what you'll notice is this dude is all set and ready to go. So let's just have a look. Make sure everything lines up nice and easy, nice and nice and pretty. So there we go. That looks good. Top view. We need one, two, three, four copies. So we're going to go ahead and rotate that by 72 degrees about this center point. Oh, I didn't make four copies. That's OK. We'll go ahead and just do it mm -hmm. the old fashioned way. OK, so here we are. We have another portion of our dome. Now what we're ready to do is to add some more hexagons. So let's just go ahead and do that. Grab a hexagon. Whoops, I don't want the C. <laughs> just the hexagon. Boom. Boom. OK, now we're going to do the exact same thing here. What we're going to do is we're going to draw a construction line across here. Let me deselect that. We're going to rotate our view just a smidge. And we are going to draw a vertical line now. Vertical line. Same thing. And a horizontal line. Just like this. We're going to look at the side of this bad boy. Something like that. We're going to draw a circle in the view. Rotate in the particular. Come on. Come on view rotation just like that and we are going to rotate this not 72 degrees and we don't want copies so we're going to rotate this about the center of the circle out to here down to here and now we can get rid of our construction lines let me just go ahead and flip this under here and top view, we should all be set and ready to go. So there we are. And we're going to rotate this guy by 72 degrees. And we're going to make four copies of it this time. And there we have it. OK, so there we have it. We're almost, we're almost done. Now, you can keep going all the way around to make a ball. So if, if we go back to the model of the one that I already finished, what you'll notice is that we have these. But then at the bottom, to kind of finish it off, you put 
a half of a hexagon in this area right here. Now what you can do is put a full hexagon there and then more pentagons, and then you basically go all the way around. So if you'll notice around the perimeter, around the equator, I guess you could say, you have a, a solid red. So this is where if you're making a house or like a roof, this is where you would stop it. You would get this down to this point and stop. So that's what we're gonna do right now. So let's go back into copy here and let's go to the top view and what we want, and I'm gonna make this blue kind of like I did before. That way we can see what the various different pieces are. So let's make that guy blue and let's put it into place. So what we're gonna do is go here. We're gonna copy this guy over to here. We are going to rotate it into place. Do not wanna copy here and here. Okay, so now what you can see is we've just got this kind of sort of connected. And honestly, what, what a lot of people probably would do instead of if you're building a house for instance, you wouldn't do this. You would actually just make this a flat wall, and this is where you'd put like a window or something. But we're gonna go ahead and just do it all out official and fancy-like. So let's just put a construction line right here. Connect the dots. It's gonna be exactly the same as it was for the last operation. We're gonna draw a vertical line. We're going to draw a line that is perpendicular to this guy like that we're going to rotate our view so that we are looking straight at it and we're just going to rotate it down into place so let's just go ahead and put in a circle view we need to hit this down to there. Should line up nice and perfect, and it does. So let's just go ahead and do that. Let me switch this view so that I can see what I am doing. Whoop, and I made that blue wrong. There we go. Okay, so let's do this, and let's go here and out, and intersect the circle and here. And there we have it. That should join up just absolutely perfectly. Whoops. Right there. Now you'll notice if I look at this purely in elevation, this kind of dips down a little bit and that's where I'm saying that you probably would put a flat wall with a window in it there if you were making a house. And that's because if you look at a, a full sphere version you know, this this isn't quite a straight line all the way around. It kind of it kind of waves its way around, and that's just due to the the nature of the sh you know the, the shape here. But let's go back, and we can go ahead and put the finishing touches on this. Let's make oops. Let's get this, this, and this. Go to the top view. Go to a wireframe so that I can actually see it. We're going to do this again, active angle, 72 degrees, four copies. And there you have it. We have just modeled a geodesic dome. Now, when I say, when I said before that these sizes are standard and you can scale them to be whatever you want. Now that, now that we have this drawn, Let's just say that I wanted to scale it up to where this, you know, the diameter was a certain dimension. So, you know, what we all we would do is just say top view, then you, you pick the dimension that you want. You can just choose the whole thing and scale it up by that amount. Let's say, I don't know, two. Right, so you have the same ratio, you know, or the, you know, the, the triangles are proportional to each other whether it's this or this, this or this, rel relative to each other, it's always the same. So that's where those, you know, those base decimal numbers come from. That's just bit the basic, you know, bottom line dimension. So 
right there we have it. That's uh, an entire geodesic dome in a nutshell. Not that you ever would want to use that information for anything. But hey, you can't say that your old buddy Justin didn't show you how to do something freaking cool. Because that's kind of cool. I mean, how many people have ever seen this done? Let alone, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I don't know. You might use it, you might not. I might use it, I might not. I really liked my dome house. I might build a dome house in some point in my life. Who knows? I don't know. But anyway, until next time here in the joint, I will see you guys later. There's the clock again. One of these days I'm gonna learn I need to turn that stupid thing off before I make videos.